Do you consider yourself a high achiever? Smart, driven, highly successful? I am so excited to have you. My name is Julia Arndt and I'm the host of the Stress Podcast. I will help you develop your stress resilience the same way you've developed your workplace superpowers. Learn peak performance tools to thrive at work and in your personal life. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to Stressed, the podcast to develop your next workplace superpower. My name is Julia Arndt, and I'm the host of this podcast. I'm a peak performance coach and stress management trainer, and I'm really, really excited to dive with you today into the question, how to stop overthinking. And you might be thinking right now that I have already done a podcast episode about this topic, which is absolutely correct. It is honestly by far the most downloaded podcast episode that I have on my podcast since I started this one and a half years ago. And so it really intrigued me to talk more about how to stop overthinking because it seemed like a lot of you are really, really interested in this topic. So today we are going to dive into how to stop overthinking part two. And this was a really interesting experiment for me, honestly, and to be totally transparent with you, because I obviously had to go back to the first podcast episode and I wanted to listen to it to make sure um, that I understand what I talked about in the first episode to make this podcast episode more interesting for you and, of course, um, help you develop yourself in that process of understanding overthinking and thoughts, okay? And um, this was a really uh, big test for me because I usually don't really like to listen to my podcast episodes again because uh, it's kind of tricky sometimes um, to analyze yourself, um, but it is always a really powerful exercise. And it is also always very eye-opening because you can see how much and how far you have actually come over a period of time. So, and this actually triggered a couple of other topics that I want to talk about in future podcast episodes because it was really interesting to see um, the process and to also see maybe how comfortable or how uncomfortable I was even just six months ago and um, still talking in front of a camera and recording podcast episodes and what was also really interesting to me when I was listening to that podcast episode yesterday was um, the quality. So I hope that today and I hope in the future my podcast episodes are qualitatively a lot better um, and I hope of course that you will take away a lot of insights from these podcast episodes. This is my main goal. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm talking to you. This is why I'm sitting in front of a camera because I really want to help you in your own personal development. I want to help you understand that you can be a peak performer um, and that you can do this sustainably with without burning yourself out and having to leave your job at the end of the day because you don't know what else to do. Okay, so let's jump into the topic how to stop overthinking part two. Where do I start? Well, I actually thought when I was listening to the podcast episode yesterday that there was a lot of good information in that podcast episode. So I highly encourage you to go back to this first podcast episode and to listen to it again. And I will link it in the show notes as well, because um, I think I'm, I obviously don't want to repeat myself and I want to make sure that you kind of get the baseline and the foundations of why are we overthinking in the first place? Okay, so make sure that you're checking this out, even though the quality of that podcast episode is not my proudest moment, to be totally honest and transparent with you, but I totally own it. Um, and this is just my own personal process of um, becoming a better speaker, becoming better in front of the camera, make sure that my podcast episodes are a little bit more um, authentic. Um, and yeah, and to just be myself and to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and and being comfortable with being imperfect, okay? Um, so make sure that you check that out. But what we talked about in the first episode was that um, thoughts and emotions are really closely connected and oftentimes um, people that have tendencies to be depressed or feeling anxious are also people that are overthinking. And I thought it was really interesting that I said that seven months ago. <laughs> and I do want to say that I think that in general, everybody is thinking 
thoughts, right? So this is the very first most important baseline that I want you to take away from today's podcast because we are all thinking thoughts on a day-to-day basis. So you are not alone. We are all in the same boat because we are all human beings. And by being human beings, it also means that we are also all having thoughts and emotions. In fact, we are thinking about 60 to 80,000 thoughts in a day and 90% of these thoughts are repetitive. So that is really, really powerful. And seven out of 10 thoughts are usually more negative than positive. So this leads me to the other thing that I wanted to really share with you today, because one of the things that is really important to know is is that thoughts and emotions are really, really closely connected. In fact, when you are experiencing something, just a situation in your day-to-day life, then Uh, First of all, the way of how you're reacting is by an emotion and usually then that emotion triggers a thought and vice versa. So there's an interconnection between emotions and thoughts and there are five core feelings that all of us can relate to and all of us have felt in our lives before. These five feelings are happiness, sadness, anger, fear and shame. And I think this is really interesting just just to talk about this first of all because think about this. We have five core feelings One of them is positive, happiness, and then four of them are a little bit more tricky and more difficult feelings, like, for example, sadness, anger, fear, shame, right? So this also is already an indication that the thoughts that we are having might sometimes be a little bit more negative, um, which is totally okay. We just need to know how we handle these thoughts on a day-to-day basis and how to make sure that we are not going down a rabbit hole to think too many negative thoughts that then can lead to mental health issues, okay? So this is really important to notice first. So there is a connection between emotions and thoughts. And in the last podcast episode, I related and I mentioned a couple of different books um, that I found really, really helpful in this process. And I want to mention to you today a new book, because of course, I have evolved as well and I have read more books and studied more in order to um, understand this process. The book that I want to recommend to you today is also by Joe Dispenza, somebody that I've been loving reading from because he did a book on breaking the habits of being yourself, which is really, really powerful and I highly recommend. But the one that I haven't talked about yet, but I find highly interesting is Evolve Your Brain. And he really talks about the neuroscience of all of the things that are going on in our mind, where it all comes from, how thoughts and emotions are connected, how we can change our brain circuits by simple, sheer starting to be more awareness of the things that we are thinking about, for example, um, and how all of this also evolved, right? Because um, he talks about the reptilian brain, he talks about the part of our brain that is the oldest part of our brain and what kind of functions the brain is responsible for. And then he's also talking about the part of the brain that is actually the most recent, the most evolutionary, um, newest part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex or the neocortex. Um, And again, and he talks a lot about um, their functions as well and how all of these different processes are interconnected. I think this is really interesting because once you understand what is happening in your brain and once you understand that it is normal and that you're just a normal human being and that everybody that is walking on this planet has the same experience as you then we can a little bit relax into this let's be honest and be like okay um, I'm not the only person that is overthinking their situations and I can learn how to get out of this. This is really, really important and something that I felt like um, maybe I didn't highlight enough in the first podcast episode. There are ways to reduce overthinking, I would say, because let's be honest, you cannot remove the thoughts that you have in your brain and in your head on a day-to-day basis because This is why we are so successful and this is why um, we are walking on this planet and this is why we are the most strongest race on this planet as well, if that totally makes sense, I hope, hope, right? Um, So let's talk about how to stop overthinking and maybe a couple of new tools and techniques that I have explored over the last couple of months in order to help myself with that as well. Because just like you, I have a lot of thoughts and of course I am overthinking different situations sometimes and I have really learned that it is really really powerful to observe and analyze my thoughts. 
You might be thinking now, well, I'm already overthinking, so I'm already observing and overanalyzing my thoughts, but I'll I'll let I'll challenge you on this one. Because sometimes we are overthinking, but we're doing it more subconsciously or even unconsciously. So the goal really is is to bring our thoughts into our conscious mind. And one of the perfect powerful tools that I really enjoy doing on a regular basis is to bring these thoughts into my awareness by journaling, by understanding, hey, what am I actually writing about? Because I'm usually not sitting down and I'm going to be like, okay, this is what I'm going to write about today. I'm kind of just letting it flow um, and I'm just seeing what is coming up for me. And that is a really powerful practice because if you do this on a regular basis, then you start seeing probably patterns. So you can see what you are thinking about over and over and over again. This is a really powerful process to help you start understanding your thoughts better. Because only if you create awareness will you be able to change things. Remember, we have talked about this plenty of times in the past before, but only if you are creating awareness of what is going on within you can you start making changes in your life. So if you are overthinking situations at the moment, the only way of how you can change that is by starting to become aware of what these thoughts are about in the first place. Totally makes sense, I hope, okay? So what are the thoughts, right? This is the very first step that you need to explore in order to maybe shift that perspective. So um, I'm also going through a cognitive behavioral therapy course at the moment that has helped me um, understand a lot of new tools and techniques that I'm really, really excited about. So I'm going to obviously integrate all of these learnings into the podcast episodes in the future as well. And two powerful tools, two super simple but so powerful tools that I have learned in the CBT course is mental flexibility and a shift in perspective because we are all able and capable to flex our mental thoughts. Which What does that mean? I mean by that, that you know we can think one way, but we can also think another way. And again, we do need to be aware <laughs> that we are overthinking in the first place. And then we need to challenge ourselves to think differently, to flex our muscle, right? To, to be flexible in our mental capacity and to shift perspective. So for example, if you're thinking a lot of really negative thoughts, then you should be asking yourself, okay, but what can I see positively in this situation? What is actually something that is a, a, a healthier way to look at things? Or what in this situation can I identify as something that's actually good? or something that I can at least learn from because it's maybe interesting, okay? Oh, interesting, okay? Um, maybe there's something that I can learn from that. Or um, I've been thinking about something that is very black and I'm thinking about something that's really white or I'm thinking about a rectangular structure and I'm thinking about a round structure, right? We have all these different capacities where we can focus on something with our eyes, but we can also focus on something with our ears um, or with our senses, right? So there, there's a lot of different ways on how we can shift perspective. And a shift in perspective also helps you to understand not just yourself, but also other people. So, um, so those are two really powerful tools, mental flexibility and a shift in perspective that you can use and apply at any point in the day, at any point in your overthinking process in order to stop overthinking and in order to find a different perspective on why um, you are thinking the things that you've been thinking or um, how you can look at the situation that you're overthinking from a different point of view, okay? So two powerful tools. So first of all, let me summarize this again. Self-awareness, right? Awareness of what are the thoughts in the first place. Why are they coming up over and over and over again? I do believe that we are overthinking certain situations because we are not happy with these situations. It is something that is unresolved in our hearts or it is something um, that we need to take a closer look at and by thinking these thoughts over and over and over again, it is actually an indication from your own body and mind that you should be paying more attention to what is going on in your life and what makes you happy and maybe what does not make you so happy. And I'm going to give you a personal example because I have recently had a little... Um, 
um, dispute with one of my girlfriends and I've been thinking a lot, a lot, a lot about that situation and about the things that were said and about the things how we can shift our relationship and our friendship to make things better and I found myself constantly going back in my thoughts to this situation and to my friend and what do I do next, right? And I realized that I was totally overthinking the situation and that, of course, by just thinking these thoughts, I was producing stress in my body and I felt stress about the situation. And, of course, with that stress comes more emotion and more thought and, you know, and then that circle circle of um, emotions, thoughts, chemical reactions in your body are just making that more and more difficult and that is also a reason why we are overthinking because we are basically feeding that negative cycle of emotions thoughts because emotions generate thoughts and thoughts generate emotions so I might feel fearful because there's a situation that makes me feel really scared and then a thought pops up in my mind what if I find myself in the exact same situation again? It doesn't matter if it is in your job, if it is with a partner, if it is with a friend. Um, and then that thought produces more anxiety, right? Oh my God, if, if that really does happen again, oh my God, there's even more fear that I'm feeling. And that fear produces even more negative thoughts. So this negative cycle of thoughts and emotions is really important to understand. And of course, now you're going to ask yourself the question, okay, how can I break this cycle? Um, again, we're just creating awareness that there is a cycle, emotions and thoughts, and that are there are literally chemical reactions that are happening in your body that you need to be aware of in order to break that. So awareness is super, super important, and you will hear me talk about it until the end of your life if you're listening to this podcast for the next couple of years. Um, so, okay, so how can you break that cycle? The cycle can be broken by journaling, for example, right? Because you're starting to observe your thoughts and you're starting to understand what is going on. Why am I thinking these thoughts? Is it something that is against my values? And you know, sometimes this is not a process of an hour or two hours. This is sometimes a process over a week or two weeks or three weeks. It took me three weeks to pick up the phone and talk to my friend and to figure out what was really going on within me and what I was really needing from her in order to feel better about the situation. And sometimes this is kind of tricky as well, right? Because maybe one friend wants to communicate immediately and you need a little bit of time to reflect on something and that's totally okay. It's still important to communicate and to say, hey, maybe I just need a little bit more time to think about the situation and to really understand myself in this process. But um, it is really, really powerful to understand your thoughts, understand what do you need. And that brings me to the next really powerful tool that I want to share with you today, which is also from Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and it's called the Lazarus Technique. Lazarus uh, was a psychologist. I don't know anymore if it was in the 1800s or 1900s. I think um, 1920s, actually, now that I'm talking about it. <laughs> and the Lazarus Technique is super, super simple um, and yet so, so powerful. So if you're finding yourself in a tricky situation, if you're finding yourself in a situation that makes you overthink it, um, then, of course, there's a lot of things going on. Thoughts, problems, negative emotions. There's this whole funnel of things, right? Um, but if you are there right now, I want you to think about one single word, one word that is positive, that you need from this situation or that you need in order to make this situation better, okay? So this is, again, really simple, but yet so, so powerful to think about this because we could complain forever, right? We can spend a lot of time and energy on the things that we're not happy about, but it's not really going to bring you forward. So I want you to focus on the things that you can control. And one of the things that you can control is to be really clear on what is it that you really need. What do you want to get out of this cycle? What do you want to get out of maybe um, a difficult relationship or a difficult job or um, if, if there's something that you need to interact with? What is one word that basically describes your need? So with my friend, if I think about this, um, I haven't done this exercise actually yet uh, in this regard, but let me do this here with you live. Um, I needed 
attention and love. Oh, that's already two words. So maybe let me choose um, the word um, attention. I think that really describes it really well, right? So now I have this one word and I'm focusing on this word um, instead of um, getting spun up in all of these different stories and the things that were said or that the things that were not said and the things that happened and the things that didn't happen. Um, because at the end of the day, we are all people with human needs but we are all people with different human needs. And sometimes um, only by communicating and by understanding a different perspective, that's why you're doing a shift in perspective, are you able to, to navigate a situation, okay? So awareness, self-management almost, right? Um, so how do, I, how do you understand what you need? And um, how do you break through that overthinking cycle by journaling, by understanding your thoughts? And then how can you shift your perspective? How can you practice some mental flexibility in order to see that um, situation that you're maybe overthinking about from a different angle? I already told you about journaling, which is, I think, one of the most powerful tools out there that you can do in order to start um, creating self-awareness. And at the same time, there are two other tools that I want to share with you today. The first one is being distracted slash having a conversation with someone because when we are overthinking we can get so so stuck in our own mind and we're starting again to create these stories and tell ourselves certain things and as soon as we start to get out of our head and we talk with somebody else about it we can get another perspective so this can also help us to shift our perspective from one way of thinking to another way of thinking okay so having a conversation with a friend, with a partner, with a colleague, with a therapist, with a counselor, with a coach can really help you to shift your perspective as well if you are not capable to do that in a certain or in a specific situation on your own, which is totally, again, normal as well. Because again, that's why so many people are struggling with overthinking. And then the next thing that I think a lot of us are oftentimes forgetting is, is that we can get that we need to get into action in order to actually change something in our life. So the next time you are overthinking a situation, I want you to think about this question. What can you do differently? How can you act differently in order to create a different situation, in order to create a new experience that actually breaks that cycle of your thoughts and emotions? This could be really, really difficult to do. And yet it is so, so, so powerful. So powerful because, again, we can think a lot of things. We can uh, learn a lot of things. But if we don't do it, if we don't act on it, if we don't actually get into action and create a new experience, we will stay stagnant and we will actually not really move forward, even though, of course, these other two pieces are really important um, in order to get into action. Um, but if we don't get into action, a really important piece of our self-development is missing, okay? So overthinking is definitely not so easy, but you can totally um, improve that process and you um, shouldn't feel frustrated or you shouldn't feel upset about yourself because this is another thing, and I do mention that in the first podcast episode, episode about how to stop overthinking is don't push your thoughts and feelings away. Don't resist them. Don't think, oh, here they are again. I need to shove them somewhere in a closet or somewhere in a drawer because I hate that these thoughts come up over and over and over again. And then they just come up even more and they come up even more. And this might also be a reason why you are overthinking, right? Um, because what we resist persists and what we kind of push away, we strengthen. And so it, it again, when you are overthinking, it is an indication that you should be paying more attention to this, okay? So this is really one of the other things that I think are really, really important that I want you to take away from today's podcast episode. Don't push your thoughts away. They are there for a reason. They are there because your body and mind are trying to tell you something. Something is maybe unresolved in your heart um, and you need to pay attention to it and you need to resolve it and you need to um, start learning about these things instead of just trying to push them away, okay? So that's, uh, yeah, that's, I think, all that I wanted to share with you today in the episode How to Stop Overthinking Part 
two. And I am more than happy to do a third or a fourth or a fifth part on how to stop overthinking if you do have any more questions or if you feel like you're maybe faced with a specific challenge that I haven't really um, went into or mentioned in today's podcast episode. Feel free to reach out to me. You can do that via email on my website um, or on social media channels. There are so many different ways on how you can interact with me and I'm always super super happy and grateful to hear from you because it means that I'm not just sitting in my home office speaking in front of a camera but there's actually people out there that are listening to the podcast episodes and that are taking away some helpful tools and techniques to um, start learning the process of personal development and peak performance okay so reach out to me if you have any questions and um, yeah, that's all I wanted to share with you for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, if you do, feel free to share it with somebody. If you know someone that is constantly overthinking situations, maybe a friend that is calling you all the time and tells you about these situations that they're super frustrated about, then share that episode with them. Tell them um, that there are ways to stop the overthinking cycle um, and they are not alone in the process, okay? So take care, my friend. I'm really happy that you are here and I hope to see you again next time and um, next week, same time, same place. And until then, have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care, Julia.